FBI agents arrested a pro-life activist last Friday for physically assaulting a man outside, allegedly physically assaulting a man outside of Planned Parenthood last year. So 48-year-old Mark Houck, who co-founded The King's Men, a Catholic organization that mentors young men, was taken into custody and charged for allegedly violating the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, which prohibits the use of force and intimidation against anyone who provides reproductive health care. Hook has a history of protesting outside abortion clinics. According to pro-life outlet LifeSite News, he drove two hours to two different abortion centers in Philadelphia every Wednesday to speak for hours on end. So it seems like the issue in this case is a dispute about who apparently pushed whom first. He's been accused of twice assaulting a man in his 70s who is the one that's brought suit and for violating laws that prevent you from interfering in people's right to going and access abortion clinics without being harassed. What do you make of it? Yeah, so uh, look, we don't know exactly what happened there. His wife said that their 12-year-old son was with Hauk and they were you know, preaching, engaged in anti-abortion political activity outside the, um, the clinic, and that a man um, came up to them and got very um, close to the, son, the, the literal words, was entered the son's personal space and started hurling insults and vulgarities at him, and Hauk shoved this man away from his son. This man tried to sue Hauk unsuccessfully, is I think kind of an activist from the other direction. Um, the, the, the uh, charge that Hauk violated this Access to Reproductive Clinics Act, um, that charge was thrown out over the summer, but now uh, the Justice Department has for some reason gotten involved. So I, basically, this seems like it was a kind of obscure local matter. I don't know why the, what the FBI has to do with it or why they raided his home. Would they, so they, I mean, it's dangerous when the FBI raids your home. I know you agree. Certainly. Obviously, they showed up, tons of agents, guns drawn, and uh, they, he, tr he said, you know, they showed up at the door and he tried to say, like, I, I'm, I will come out with my hands up. Please don't come into my house with my, he has a million kids, you know, with all your guns. They did anyway. Um, they, they did, you know, that whole thing. And, uh, and uh, I, I, look, I think it's pretty outrageous. I, it doesn't look to me like there's any underlying basis for this kind of behavior. Yeah, and FBI I think you should be able to, you, you are and should be allowed to protest outside abortion clinics. Well, within, if you don't violate the rules against it. I mean, I think there's a sensitivity to uh, this man's son seeing vulgarities or having his personal space violated. One of these laws, of course, are there to protect women who are about to engage in or are considering a very sensitive medical procedure from being harassed and threatened in front of abortion clinics. We've obviously seen a number of abortion providers murdered in the United States of America, and we have seen um, a number of abortion facilities attacked and um, uh, uh, um, vandalized and bombed in the United States of America. So there's a reason these laws are in place, and I would just like for the people who have the same sensitivity about someone raising their voice or using expletives in front of a child have that same sensitivity about the women, many of them young women, who are trying to seek medical services at these kinds of clinics. Now, the piece about the FBI overreach, I think, is, is obviously, if as described, is an overreach. I did a radar and spoke extensively about how concerned I was about the African um, Socialist People Party's member being accused of um, being a non and named as non um, indicted co-conspirator in some like Russian plot, and he was a 70-something year old man who was marched out into the street, asked to sit on the curb at gunpoint by the FBI for the crime of being a socialist in a country that's supposed to be free. So obviously, I strongly disagree with the, wep the FBI being weaponized in these kinds of ways. But I also don't want to lose sight of the vulnerabilities, the, the conflicting vulnerabilities that exist in a situation like this. So one person brought his child to a protest, and it seems to like is maybe weaponized the vulnerability that that child was in as an excuse to have been a, in a position that somebody else found to be intimidating at an abortion clinic. And I hope that we can have sensitivities, sensitivities all around. People should stay outside of the zones that have been designated around abortion clinics and protest as they have the right to do. And also people should be sensitive to the reality of what people have to endure when they go and uh, pursue these activities. Right, because, you know, to be clear, this this bill, it's, federal, it's a federal law, it's not a bill, it's a federal law. The Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act 
um, it, it can't, it doesn't preempt the First Amendment. So it, 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 it cannot, and if it does, yeah, it's the, unconstitutional. The first, the first Amendment isn't a blanket right. Of course, we know that protests are all kinds of constraints on it. There are protest zones. There are um, free, you know, free speech zones. There have been a lot of limitations, especially under the Bush era. Well, those about are often where, struck down. Where and when you can protest, but they're not all struck down. There's, there's limitations on your ability to incite people to have various kinds of behaviors. Donald Trump is very much in the middle of learning exactly what those lines are, but what you can and cannot say as people attempt to attribute some blame for uh, right. one six to him. So one of those caveats is your inability to get too close to the entrances of some of these um, abortion clinics because there has been a great deal of intimidation that's happened to try to prevent people from accessing their legal right to choose. The Supreme Court ruled, I think, eight to one, right, that uh, that the Westboro Baptist Church type people can scream the most vile things at the funerals of yeah. military service people. But that's not the that's not the rule that's at issue here with these abortion clinics I'm, in particular. I'm saying the amount of the amount of uh, protected, harassing, awful, vile speech that is protected by the Supreme Court is is vast. So you you can you can say you can be outside an abortion clinic and you can in quite strongly worded terms object to what's going well, no, on there, there and make your objection. I'm sorry, my, my computer died, so I can't look it up. But there are, are limits to how close you can be to an abortion clinic, which apparently this person didn't violate because that aspect of the law was struck down. But the point I'm making is that quite obviously, as evidenced by the fact that there was a law here in this case, that he didn't violate, but which right. was an operation, you cannot have unlimited right, you do not have an unlimited right to stay and do whatever you want in front of an abortion clinic. <laughs> I, I'm saying you should, you, your right to protest in front of an abortion clinic should not be constrained. I, I mean, I'm looking at the exact language of the, it. It sounds to me like it's just saying things that would already be illegal you can't you can't intimidate someone you can't injure someone you can't interfere with you can if someone is trying to get into the clinic you can't stand in their way um, all these things that would be illegal anyway it's making clear to people I, I guess additionally what their rights are but it's not it's not additional rights beyond the scope of the first amendment it's just the, it's just the rights that you have no my understanding is that there are specific rights about how close you can often protest to abortion clinics in particular um, just like there might be rules about how Close, you can come to circle someone's personal residence that right, before yeah, it trips yeah. over into harassment. Well, right, but that's like not that. a special. That's a. That's it's not a special. Only abortion clinics have. Well, no, this it's it's, it's, right. it's rules it's that have come out of litigation, particularly around all right. of the uh, harassment, um, physical attacks, murders that have happened to abortion providers and people who work in those kinds of clinics. What it sounds to me happened here, though, was a confrontation, not a particularly violent, there was a little shoving between two people, activists on two sides of this issue, who had some kind of confrontation, that's obviously a very heated subject, and that was that, and there doesn't need to be any further real criminal or investigative or any matter, but then the FBI has decided it should be a, a, an FBI issue, which I mean, which is, is bad and speaks to, um, and I, you know, conservatives are realizing they're learning. The FBI is not is no one's friend, and this is something to the left's credit that they've known for a very long time. Something libertarians have known that conservatives have had to learn. Um, the, the law, the you know, the party of law enforcement is learning how uh, how institutions of law enforcement um, can mistreat people of all sorts of political persuasions. Yeah. Of all, uh, and, and, the, and that the process, and it's not personal, like the, the process of banging down people's doors, pointing guns at their children, dragging them out into the street, is just how they do business. It's how top law enforcement agents agencies do often do business and it's bad and it's wrong and there yeah. needs to be reform of it and and maybe now we can all be on board with changing the way and not just the FBI but SWAT teams and things like that yeah and look people can go back and listen to my radar on my argument for why the FBI should be abolished and I hope that conservatives keep that energy up when we're talking about uh, the FBI infringing the right to the people it has historically infringed 85 percent of which uh, based on the study that I cited in that radar are are strongly on the left. But if so. they abolish the FBI, who will fail to catch the mass shooters? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> we'll have a rising for you right after this.